Hello car fans! Today I know I won't be painting anything like I intended. I mentioned this in the last video, but my new air compressor is still not working. So I need to find something else to do, which should be easy on this car. Garage time! In previous videos, I spent a lot of time trying to get this rear fiberglass bumper to work well with the car. And I'm really happy with the way it fits, but I think there's a little bit more I can do where it meets up with this bumper. So if you remember, this bumper is a hybrid solution, half fiberglass, half steel, and then those bumperettes are custom aluminum ones that I actually made. So what I want to do today is improve the junction between the fiberglass, the aluminum, and the steel. So if you look down lower, there's a little bit of a gap right here, and that's because I cut the original bumperettes off of this fiberglass piece and I want to attach these two pieces together. Now here's a better view of what I want to do. I really just want to wall this section off. So this is the bracket that attaches to the car. And then uh, if this just had a return or a wall right here, it would make mating these parts up much easier. And then this triangle here will have a hole in it that'll mate up with the hole in the uh, license plate panel. There's the hole in the license plate panel that'll made up with the, uh, the wall here that I'm going to fiberglass in. This side has a similar problem where, you know, these two panels are loose from each other and I need to adjust this down a little bit. But also it looks like this panel, maybe it's because I made this piece, but it looks like it's going in a little bit right here. So preferably I have a straight line all the way down. So I will probably uh, do a little bit of welding onto the end of this to try to get those lines uh, perfect. Okay, these tape lines really highlight the disparity between the fiberglass and the steel. And so I need to add a little fiberglass here, add a little steel here, and just try to you know, make these lines parallel. I'll do the best I can. Uh, thank you, Ingersoll Rand. I guess the uh, hottest month of the year here in Huntington Beach, I'm gonna have to either um, get the angle grinder out or just go by hand. All I'm trying to do is to make this uh, edge parallel to this tape line, and then I'm gonna build it up with fiberglass. So now I have a cavity that I can just load up with the fiberglass, the cloth, and the resin. That'll create this wall that I'm, I've got here taped up. And then once it dries, I just pull the tape off and it should be kind of what I want. I'm mixing this up five to one. I have a little mark here on the inside of this uh, small cup so I know that it's indeed five to one.
Okay, I've oriented it now so that the resin is flowing into the, the new flange. I put a ton of cloth in, so this hopefully should build up some thickness. I got, I hope, all the air bubbles out. This cloth ties into the existing walls, so it actually rolls up the sides and into the existing curvature of the bumper. So this epoxy is uh, super strong. This should be plenty good enough to, to attach the license plate panel. This fiberglass is gonna take a long time to dry. I ended up with a slow hardener on that and it really does take overnight. So now I'm gonna switch my attention to this license plate panel and I need to adjust this gap down here just a little bit. I put the tape here as a reference of what looked like it was, it looked like it was straight, but I'm gonna you know, add just a little bit more. You can see the thickness here is wider. So I need to add the same thickness here down to here. And it's, it's really not much. So normally I would, you know, normally I would unfold this flange and, and re-bend it and adjust it out and then weld the corner. But because this piece, this is the mounting attachment I want to use, this piece is already welded on and that's going to make it really difficult to unfold it and redo the whole thing. So rather than take it all apart and remake the piece or redo the flange, I think I'm just going to cheat and just use the TIG welder and just weld the bead on the end. I've done that before, like on the door gaps, on the edge of the doors, and this, you'll never know. It's just gonna be a little bit bulkier on the corner, but we're talking about an eighth of an inch at the most that we wanna change this position. As I weld this edge, this tape will burn. So I'm gonna reference the opposite edge with this marker so I can always remember where I was. Or maybe I won't. I've had the question before, you know, why do I wear, sometimes I don't wear any gloves and sometimes I wear these really thin, these are the cheap Harbor Freight, like five mil, three mil gloves. And these are really just for uh, sun protection or UV protection. So obviously the arc creates UV rays. You don't wanna um, burn your skin, but this is pretty low amperage. Um, I'm using 35 right here because it's on a corner, but um, a lot of times I'm only using like 20 and I don't push the pedal all the way down. So it's not a lot of energy, but you do want to prevent yourself from absorbing UV rays. Um, and then in terms of heat, you know, you don't want this to get too hot anyways. If you're melting these gloves, then you're distorting the panel, you're ruining it. So I don't like to wear heavy gloves because I do like to feel how hot it is. It's a slow process. You know, I'm talking to you now while this is cooling off and then I'm going to go back at it. give you guys a quick view of what that looks like. That's just the, the first pass on the bead. And then from the edge, it's not building up a lot of thickness yet, but it will. I will definitely start building up some thickness on that. Now that there's a base bead down, it's easier to just build it up. So if you can't hold your hand on this for a couple seconds, um, and I can feel the heat through these gloves, then it's too hot. So you just have to wait. So I don't use water or a spray bottle or even air on this. It's better if it cools down slowly. So the metal expands when you heat it up. And then when you quench it or, or cool it very quickly, then it shrinks more quickly or it shrinks more. So rapid cooling is, is sometimes desirable if you're trying to shrink it. But in this case, the shape is already good. So I'm not trying to shrink it. And then while I'm waiting for it to cool, I will measure the distance. I want this to be the same. So I got 1.7 here at the top and I got kind of 1.62, maybe 6.3 on the bottom. So that's, that's what I'm doing, trying to get this even. So I only have 60 thousandths left to put on this end. 
All right, this is roughly the length of filler wire that I use to add on to this. I'm gonna do one more pass just because I can always grind it off. But this is about, I don't know, 18 inches long and uh, 30 thousandths thick. So that's the amount of material I just added to the edge of my license panel. It's not, obviously it's not heavy. Here's a shot of my quick and dirty sort of gap repair. Probably should have made this panel closer the first time. And I don't recommend, you know, adding on to the end like this unless you absolutely have to. But this is better than using, you know, the body filler, plastic filler, because it just doesn't work well on edges like this. It's gonna be a while before I can mock this back up on the car. A, because the fiberglass isn't dry, and B, I can't really grind that weld down with my little air tool I like to use, the angle grinder. So um, that's gonna to have to wait. Sorry about that, no closure on that modification, but I will show you guys on a future video. So I gotta find something else to do. So this is not for the car. These are some more shop lights that I wanna keep adding to my, uh, my garage. This is gonna really come in handy uh, when it comes time for the painting and the sanding, the final sanding, really looking at the scratches. I need a little bit more light. Okay, one of the concerns I have about the lighting in this workspace is that these fluorescent tubes are, you know, they're not that bright, one, and two, they're, they're unprotected. So if they break or burst or get hit or fall in an earthquake, they're gonna hit my car. And you know, it, be, it didn't really matter much before, but now that it's getting closer to paint or almost when it's painted, I gotta start worrying about uh, things like this and also some of the other stuff that's kind of hanging up here in the attic. There, there are 60 watts, which should be a good amount. Yeah, so these have a, a glass panel on them and uh, there's an array of LEDs and it has this, this mounting bracket which I can hook up to the beams in my garage and then I can steer these wherever I need to. Uh, the difficulty is they're a little bit difficult to connect. I'm gonna have to uh, wire these into a junction box to keep it safe. These are also easy to clean. It has a glass cover and I believe these are even waterproof, which I'm not interested in waterproof, but at least the dust won't get inside and cause the LEDs to fail. So it's a nice product, aluminum housing, and so it dissipates heat and whatnot. So let's give it a try. We just returned from the store with a few goodies, mostly just wire and these little boxes that are gonna allow me to attach these new lights where I wanna put them in the garage. <laughs> I'm on for you. Yeah, 60 watts, 120 volts. Doesn't say how many lumens, but it's pretty bright. Oh yeah, it does 6,000 lumens, 50,000 hours of life. Divergence beam angle, 120 degrees. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm making some progress, but I think I um, need to go get some more of the connectors. Like this is the clamping one. I need to get the uh, screw on one or the snap in ones that go in here. And uh, you know, I'm not an electrician. I, I just play one on YouTube. Okay, that should do it for this side. I got those connectors in place.
Everything's wired up. Now it's time to turn them on. Okay, now for the moment of truth. Should probably wash this uh, switch, huh? Oh yeah. Looks like they're both on. Looking pretty good, actually. It's definitely brighter, it's a little bit whiter. It's kind of a bright bluish white light. That's so off. And on. So I still have the fluorescent on the one side and then the other side I took it down because it actually sort of interfered with where I wanted to put it. But this is, uh, this is really nice. So I'm going to put a link in the description for these lights. Uh, they're really nice. The only drawback I see, like I learned with the other ones, is, um, and I'm mostly done with the welding, but when you're, when you're welding and there's too much light in the back of your helmet, or these spotlights kind of shine behind you, uh, it can put a lot of glare on your welding helmet. So when I have been doing lots of welding, I actually prefer sort of a dim garage. So one solution would be to, you know, put a back on the helmet, like a, like a shield on the back so that light doesn't get in. I think I'll put a pull chain on it so I can uh, switch off the brighter spotlights when I'm doing that kind of welding work. But otherwise, for like 95% of everything I do, it's really helpful to have this in here. And definitely when it comes time to sanding on this and wanting to really see the scratches, I can maneuver the lights around both these lights and the other ones I installed a few weeks ago. So definitely a win-win. Please check the description below if you're interested in those. Here is the bumper and it's starting to set up. I can, I can uh, start to feel it getting hard. Now this is what was on my bench. All this paper is just really stuck to it. So it's a little too early to rip it off, but you can see it's just starting to cure up. You don't realize how important an air compressor is, or at least for me, uh, until it's gone and uh, you're not you're not getting anything done a lot of tools I use do use the air compressor uh, But we did get a few things done. You know, these are all things that are preventing me from getting the car painted I made a video about that a few few uh, weeks ago And I am really focusing on trying to get to the paint uh, Getting the roll bar installed is the last big obstacle. So wish me luck uh, hope to have the air compressor fixed next week and hopefully spraying some black epoxy primer in the rear seat area, then I can move on to the exterior. Take care, guys.